three graduates are Lord Singani. Come on, stand up. James Marshall. made their way to Little Forest Baptist Church. He loves swimming, playing video games, and listening to French rap music. His favorite subject in school was computer class. Lord is a graduate of Brook Point High School in Stafford, Virginia. He will attend Northern Virginia Community College in the fall, major in information technology. He would like to like a career in information technology cyber, cyber security. Jane Marie Martin, one in the middle, the middle, is the son of Ernest and Judy Martin. He is 18 years old and has two brothers, Lamar and Brandon, and one sister, Talisha. Jane is a dedicated member of Little Forest Baptist Church, where he is active in worship ministry, Sunday school choir, and sound and media ministry. Jane has participated in numerous activities while in two Little Forest. Supported Falls Run Nursing Falls Run Nursing Home, Thanksgiving Basket Distribution, Clothing Drives, Backpack Drive, Memorial Day Parade, Tuskegee Air Intervention, and going out to the community and witnessing to others. Jane is a senior at Freedom. He graduated. Uh, Freedom High School and is a GPA of 3.6. He has been involved in the National Honor Society two years, men's choir, a member of Omega U mentoring program for four years, and a starter of Freedom Eagles across the Eagle. Jane has earned numerous awards for honor roll and other academic awards for the and for lettering and sports. He enjoys very much so lacrosse, video games, and giving back to the community and participating. Martial arts where he earned his first degree black belt. Right. Jane plans to attend Virginia Commonwealth University in the fall where he is majoring in science, chemistry with a concentration in pre optometry He will also be involved in the Emerging Leaders Program and try out for the lacrosse team. Jane's favorite scripture is Romans 12, 19. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Jane thanks his parents for the continual support of all the members of Little Forest Baptist Church family for their prayers and support. And then there's Jared Demetrius Cofield. Jared Demetrius Cofield was born on December 22, 2004, at the Walter Reed National Military Medical Center, formerly known as the National Naval Medical Center, Bethesda, Maryland. He resides in Manassas, Virginia. Jared is the second child of Deacon Jesse Cofield, Jr., and Ruby Diane G. Cofield. He has one adult sister, Jelia Dominique Cofield of Woodbridge, Virginia, who is here today. Jalea. <laughs> my apart, my apart. I'm from Philadelphia. <laughs> my wife says we all have an accent. Uh, Jared can be best described as unafraid to go after what he believes he can accomplish. Throughout his high school year, Jared has served on multiple outreach after school programs with the Dale City Boys and Girls Club of Dale City and the Charles E. Colgan Senior High School of Nassau, Virginia. To his credit, Jared is the president of the Charles D. Colgan Senior High School class of 2023 and the Vice President of the Black Student Union. He is a recipient of the Junior Capital League's Distinguished Leadership Award. Jared serves as a member of the Virginia Student Council Association and bass drumline captain for the pride of Colgan Marching Band. Jared was introduced to Christ by his parents and accepted Jesus Christ as a Savior at Little Forest Baptist Church where he was later baptized. 
Watching Jared grow up at Little Forest Baptist Church, you would hear or see him singing, ushering, reading scripture, praying, helping with the media ministry, spring cleaning, and yes, playing the drums. <laughs> Jared, not sure what college he would like to attend, applied for, and was accepted by North Carolina A&T University, Delaware State University, Virginia State University, right. Virginia Common University, James Madison University, right. and Hampton University. To his parents and family members' surprise, Jared accepted Hampton University, yeah. his next chapter of higher education, where he will proceed, pursue a degree in business administration. He will be an active member of the Hampton University Marching Force Band, and I got it on good word that he got $62,000 in scholarships. <laughs> young men stood up, was recognized, and are on their way to bigger and better things. And I would ask that each and one of us, each and every one of us, would pray that they would continue to carry Christ with them Amen. as they pursue their careers and we know that they will be blessed. Amen. So with that, I present to you and each one of you, if you would like to go to the mic and Say a word or two. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> One thing I think I'd say is just I am grateful for, you know, my community and my church for, you know, helping me in like the longest way. Ever since I was like, I grew up here like a, like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like really nice growing up here and you guys teaching me and guiding me, you know, through like life and teaching me like all the action and like things I have to learn, you know, out in the real world. So like now that I'm here at this moment, you know, it's just like I'm about to miss you guys a lot. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just very grateful and thank you all for helping me along the way. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody again. Good afternoon. Um, you're just, all right. Um, I'll keep it short and simple. Um, like Jaden said, I remember growing up here, and um, I also remember getting told. Do you guys remember me? Remember I remember when you were younger. And I remember, yeah, I remember you. Um, but it really attests to me being here 18 years of my life and just the work that Little Force has put inside of me. Um, I never really understood why my dad would take me to go. Every every service we go to another service. And every Saturday, every Wednesday. Or then my mom would she would be after staying after and just helping with the, the food and making sure that everybody was taking care of my sister, doing vacation vibes, what I was all would be like, oh, who's here? But um, it really showed the leadership skills that Little Forest, Pastor Sneed, Reverend Dozier, Reverend Matt, the deacons, the deaconess, the trustees, everybody, it, you guys really poured into my life tremendously. Um, you know, it's, like Jane said, it's very bittersweet. You know, I'm not leaving yet. Um, but 18 years of my life, I have been here. And, um, Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Oh. Okay. We love you. We love you. Now 
Yeah. I love everybody in here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Keep on pressing, keep on going. Some may say it's the end, but the end means that efforts never die. Right. Never die. So keep on pressing. Amen? Amen. And the last one, this is positive thinking. I always think positive. Always, never, 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 never think negative when you're going for higher education or anything that you have gone in. Me, no. Everybody knows what no means, right? Don't do that. No, we learn that when we look. No, no, no. But no means there's always the next opportunity when they say no. So that door may shut, but guess what? God got another opportunity. Amen. Amen. Always know that. Always know that. And I look at these young men, and I look at all the kids in college. I did not want to go to college. I didn't want to get out of high school. <laughs> but then my grandmother said, you going to college. I said, no, 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 you going to college. So I picked this college in West Virginia, Baptist College. No people of color. <laughs> and they accepted me. So then I had to come up with a major. So I took psychology just to take it. But then I thought I was crazy. <laughs> so I had to change my major. <laughs> <laughs> then I went into music um, and I started singing. And that's when God said, this is what I've had for you all along. Amen. And the directors and the professors and everyone. So I traveled with the college um, choirs. <laughs> we just traveled the world. And I just thank God for my grandmother saying, and you want to go. Amen. Because all I want to do is get out of high school. Amen. But you've had a whole church foundation, family foundation, pressing you, praying for you, keeping you, directing you. <laughs> Show God what you have for him. Amen. Amen. Everything that you do, show God. Amen. Amen. This time we're going to have a selection from the choir. Okay. Thank you. Amen. Amen. This is the 262 leading on the everlasting arms.
Continue to have them to be the godly men that you have destined for them to be, Lord. We pray that you'll just watch over their parents. We know that there'll be many sleepless nights where they pray of their children who are out of their sights, Lord. But we pray, Lord, that the discipline that they have learned at home, that they will, that they will take with them wherever they go. We thank you, Lord, for the Little Force Baptist Church scholarship fund that was laid many yes. years ago. The pastor whose vision that you've allowed us to foresee, the pastor who come behind Reverend Jackson, who's allowed us to continue to pour into our youth financial blessings, academic blessings, religious blessings, and knowing, and knowing where, where they, knowing that the children can come to them, Lord, the leadership of the church, the pastor of the church, the different ministries of the church that have given them the many, many lessons, things that they can reach back on and learn of and reflect on, to know that that is their strength. There are so many things, Lord, that I, I don't know how to put it in words, Lord, but you know my heart, you know our hearts, Lord, and most of all, Lord, we know that you are with us today. We can hope that you will continue to bless us and to enrich our lives so that we can continue to be enriching to our children. Not only these who are here right now, Lord, but for everything that is done here, Lord, we pray that those things that are in the future, that our scholarship ministry will grow the way that we bless our children will grow, grow, will, will grow far beyond what we might be able to see now, Lord. We pray that you'll just continue to watch, to bless, and to keep us in every way. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Check the wall, push the My kids are precious wall. to me. They are gifts just like God has given you. Uh, and we count our joy to watch them grow and to be there to catch them when they fall. So with that being said, I'm going to ask our scholarship uh, recipient, thank you, uh, if they would stand and face the congregation. Amen. Okay, what number? Amen. On behalf of the Little Forest Baptist Church, I'm Pastor First Lady, all the members of Little Forest, uh, the village, we want to pour okay, into you uh, a small token of appreciation. Went back you out. Whatever you want to, amen. And if Jerry, if you want to go to the dance hall, it's good part. You can do it. <laughs> but we really want to uh, pour into you to put this in your hand and be mindful of the directions that the director or superintendent has told you what you need to do. Uh, to get your scholarship money that we sent to the school. Amen. And again, this is for you. Amen. Amen. And with that being said, I'm going to ask if she's here. I know she is, but she's all over the place. Uh, the mother of this room is in it. Got to be a twist. She got to twist this. Come forward and stand. Got to twist this. Yeah. I'm going to ask uh, the youngest member to graduate from college, Penn State. If he would come forward and stand as well. Amen. 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 And we're going to ask the grandmother of another youngest graduate of college to come and stand. Sister Robinson, <laughs> please get up. Uh, there you go. I see you again, Sister Robinson. <laughs> I think we got everybody in there. Catching up here. So what we're doing we're clear, now, clear. the village is pouring into these young people, into them, to do whatever they want to do with this. This in this envelope, see, amen. This and if you don't, if you want to get the COVID or stop us gift card, it's okay too. And the three. Amen. God bless you. That's it's, it's 
needs to be cleared. recommendation to the joint board sponsored by Deaconess Jean Bell, Trustee Gloria Greenhow, and Sister Marion Hines. The recommendation was accepted by the joint board and approved in a quarterly church meeting. The scholarship is named for our former pastor, the late Reverend Aubrey Jackson, who was the sixth pastor of Little Forest Baptist Church for 23 years. He was married to our former first lady, Lady, Dr. Gloria Jackson. Somebody say amen. amen. This scholarship honors the service of Pastor Jackson and his years of commitment to our youth. He is remembered for the way that he reached out to the youth with kindness and wisdom. He taught us that we have responsibility to have a church family to encourage, support, and educate our young and educate our young. Repeatedly reminding us of the importance of providing learning opportunities for our children. He took great pleasure doing church services to recognize the youth for success in school and for the work that they did for the for the Lord. He praised them for doing well and reminded the adults of the blessings that come from having our children work in the church when they could be someplace else involved in doing negative things. We remember yesterday, but realize that we are still blessed to continue encouraging and recognizing the achievements of our youth by awarding scholarships. Somebody say amen. Amen. The Aubrey, the Reverend Aubrey Jackson Memorial Scholarship Fund. Amen. Amen. First, giving honor to Pastor Smee, Pastor Savage, Living Doja, to all offices, members, and friends, and to everyone that's visiting with the Little Forest family today. Uh, it is a pleasure to stand before you this afternoon and just present money because we know these young people need money to go to school. So, what I am presenting to you this afternoon. From my sister and brother-in-law, three hundred dollars. From my home church, uh, Macedonia Baptist Church, one hundred dollars. 
And for me, $1,000. Mm -hmm. Sister Doji, would you come and take this for yes. Amen. <laughs> Good afternoon. So before I get into my personal reflections, can you join me once again in, with a round of applause congratulating these young men. Amen, amen. So for those who don't know me, uh, I am Alexander or Alex Avery. Um, son of trustee Avery um, back there, I'm at the door. Um, Dad, can you raise your hand? So that you amen, can amen. <laughs> <laughs> so, like these young men here, um, more specifically, um, Jaden and Jared, um, I was um, also basically born into this church. Um, a lot of you had the opportunity to know me when I was yay big, now, <laughs> now here I am, and it's a blessing because there's no place like home. And I am truly blessed and grateful for the long support that the Little Forest family has given to, upon me, upon my college journey, and I'm able to stand up here proudly and represent the Pennsylvania State. All right now, all right, all right. So I'm gonna keep it, Keep it short, um, simple, um, but I wanted to kind of give everyone some reflections and give some words of wisdom to the young men here that are going to the next chapter. Um, so my start, I was, it's crazy because it was, now it's been four to five years where I was in these young men's shoes trying to figure out the next chapter, and I was blessed to really get a good glimpse of the plan ahead of me and by the grace of God and the support that I've had, I was able to execute it. Um, but to be honest, it was a it was a rough, it was a shaky start. I kind of was 18 years old, new in the world, figuring out what I wanted to do. I was away from home for the first time, have to figure out. There's no there's no parent telling you when to go to bed, what time is dinner, waking you up in the morning. So it was definitely a big a big change. Um, but Sooner or later, you get the hang of it. Um, afterwards, I am also was blessed to also play collegiate basketball during my time there. So doing the support of my fellow teammates and my coaches also helped me adapt um, more, more faster than others. But the biggest thing for me is perseverance and time management. So to key on time management is big, as the adults know that. Time can get the best of you if you're not ahead of it quickly. And being able to truly specify and prioritize what needs to be done, rather what wants to be done. You're going to school and your parents pay a lot of money for you to go to school. So, <laughs> so a, lot of, a lot of times, you, a lot of times you can get caught up in the conundrum, the, in the dilemma of what should I do next or what's next to do? But don't forget that you are there to go to school first and get an education. Now, I'm not saying that you know you have to be in the dorms all the time and you know, have fun and enjoy yourself, but don't, don't remember where you come from and remember who you represent. Because not only are you representing your family and your family and your friends, but you're also representing the Lord as well. And doing so along my journey, that has definitely helped me out and then remembering where I've come from and who I represent. So don't be afraid to truly, truly adapt and be well known with who you are. And as time will come, you will radiate and you will assemble your own path and your own wisdom amongst yourself. Another thing that I mentioned is perseverance. College is a time where you will fall and you might stay on the ground, but you have to have the faith and the hope in yourself to get back up. 
one thing that I always told myself throughout my college is you fall seven times, but you get back eight. And you get back eight because you started off on the ground. Right? Amen. Right. And by doing so, don't forget that you are not alone. College can be scary sometimes. And by doing so, I'm reflecting with, within my own father, who has been a great, great influence upon me. I am blessed to stand here and be the man that I am today, and I wouldn't be so without him. And like I said, I want to thank again for the Little Forest Back Church family. So don't forget that you are not alone. Feel free to call up friends, family, and take the time out to really acknowledge and communicate with God, because he is truly your biggest help. Amen. Do not forget, please do not forget that he is there. He might not always seem like he's there, but he is. And you have to trust, you have to trust in him to truly guide you. Amen. Amen. You have to trust in him to truly guide you along this path. Because like I said, we, four years from now, you'll be in my shoes possibly in the same position that I am, looking upon you. Jaden and Jared, I remember 10, almost 10 years ago, when you guys were about this big, and now I'm looking at you, some of you guys are over here, and it's just amazing, and I'm very proud to see the type of men you've become. Um, Lord, I saw you read your bi um, biography, and you have a special place, because I also went to Brook Point High School, um, wow. you by so. Definitely great to see that and definitely sees that the program is still producing fine young men Amen. within that um, within that division. So like I said, I'm gonna keep it keep it short and sweet. I am here available if you need to talk, if you need any further advice, but the main points I want to give to you is don't forget who you are and don't forget where you come from. Amen. Your foundation is going to keep you going and is going to allow you to evolve and elevate within whatever future and whatever the plan that God has for you. And I'm going to leave you with one last thing. One thing that I always told myself is that God will not give us something we cannot handle. Truly, truly take that in and truly realize that there is no bigger person than him and he will always be there with you. So once again, I want to thank Little Forest and all the family and support that they've given me throughout my collegiate experience. And I'm once again wishing these three young men here before me the best. And if you ever need anything, feel free to contact Little Forest or, or even myself if needed for any advice. So once again, thank you. Amen.
I'm leaning up there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And Lord, may you use it, these um, funds as you see fit. In your precious name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. 
and I, God, the God of the Most High. Uh, I think it was Jared, I think it was you said your favorite scripture was Genesis 1-1. And it is such an amazing thing. I love the Hebrew Bible that you took the very first All right. verse. Yeah. Because All that, right. and, and I don't, and maybe you know, but the reason that's so important because everything else is hinged on that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The rest of the word of God makes no sense but for that. So I praise God that that's your favorite yeah. scripture. Yeah. I thank God for the angel of this church. Let's praise God for Pastor Nelson. I thank you Little Forest Baptist Church for the blessing to be here with you. To all of those who are on the program, just to for brevity to everyone who's participated on this program, I thank God for each and every one of you, from our worship leader to the pulpit to this amazing choir. Let's thank God for this Amen. choir. <laughs> all of you. I do want to introduce my family. You heard it from one of my associates, Dr. Nixon, our outreach marketing pastor. And he's here with his lovely wife, Amanda. Amanda, if you just wave your hand, and there's some children, Elijah yeah. and Christian. And so we thank God for them being I mean, Emmanuel. I don't know why I said Christian. Uh, Emmanuel. Uh, and, 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 and the first lady said, don't worry, man. But I want you to see outside of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the best thing in my life, best things in my life. And I'm going to start, uh, if you look on my body, you see that uh, I'm a new grandparent. All right. And, and you'll notice that the first person <laughs> listed is, is the grandchild. So we're going to start with the grandchild. He's my namesake, Keith Savage the Third. So I'm holding him up, holding him up. That's, that's my grandson, my namesake, Keith Savage the Third. Holding him is our son, Keith Savage the second, uh, and our daughter in love, Janice. Amen. And our daughter Kayla's at work. She couldn't be here, but she sends her love and her greetings. And then the true very best God, every time I get to say her name, I just I just get I get tingly. We've been married 32 years. Oh. We have known each other since we were babies. And she is the love of my life. She's the first lady of First Baptist, but she's also the first lady in my life. Sweetheart, I'd like you to stay in Benita Sad. Yeah. <laughs> we continue. We still date, y'all. We still date. We still date 32 years, and we thank God for this. I do want to give special attention, and Alice, thank you so much. I, I, I leaned over to your past, and I said, and why am I here preaching? Because Alex just did an amazing <laughs> And so thank you so much. Uh, congratulations on graduating from Penn State with a wonderful thing. That's a huge school. And so I thank God that you, in the midst of all of that, were trying to stay focused in the wisdom you gave them. So, if you don't mind, I'm just going to build on what you've already Amen. started. Amen. Uh, because you really got the message started. So I, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. To Jared, thank you so much. And for congratulations, go Pirates. We're going to have it, right? Amen. Amen. And to Janet, and you are going to go Rams. You're going to VCU, right? All right. And, uh, and you play lacrosse as well. My son, he plays lacrosse. In college as well, so that our daughter, we thank God for that and for you as well. And to Lord, bonjour, thank you so much for you being here. And uh, I wish I knew a whole lot more French because I, I would go ahead and have that conversation. But I'm so proud of you. Amen. People don't know how hard it is to learn English. It is one of the most difficult languages to learn because of all the different nuances in it. Yes. And you just being here from the DRC and since 2019. And so what a blessing for you. I am so proud of you. I'm Amen. Proud of every single one of you men. Yes. You are doing amazing things. You are doing amazing things. And I look at the accomplishments. And here's the thing. Whatever's on paper is always just the tip of the iceberg. That's, That's right. right. So I know that you are each doing amazing things and will continue to do amazing things. And so I hope this message resonates with you and it, it's something in it you can hold on to as you go through your, not only your college careers, but through life. Mm -hmm. So this message is geared towards them, but it's really geared towards everybody. Mm -hmm. If you would, find your place in 
two places, one in the Old Testament and one in the New Testament, and you can read from whatever scripture is comfortable for you and whatever your customer habit is to do, to look at it archive or electronically, or to listen, to sit or stand, whatever your customer habit here, feel free to do that. I'm going to come from the prophet Isaiah, in the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 43, and I'm going to read verses 18 through 21 from the complete Jewish Bible. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 through 21. And then I'm going to go to the New Testament. I'm going to go to the book of Philippians, the letter to the church in Philippi, Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. 13 and 14. Again, I will read it from the complete Jewish Bible, whatever it is your customer had. Feel free to do that at this time. The prophet Isaiah. Chapter 43, verses 18 through 21 from the complete Jewish Bible reads this way. Stop dwelling on past events and brooding over times gone by. I'm doing something new. It's springing up. Can't you see it? I'm making a road in the desert, rivers in the wasteland. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I put water in the desert. Rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink. The people I formed for myself so that they would proclaim my praise. Amen. Amen. And then if you go to the New Testament, to the letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Philippi, Philippians. Amen. And if y'all hear a whole bunch of amens, that, that, and all that, that's my grandson. He know how to talk to me. He know how to talk to me. <laughs> Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Brothers, I for my part do not think of myself as having yet gotten hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind me and straining forward towards what lies ahead, I keep pursuing the goal in order to win the prize by God's upward calling in the Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. 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 And if I have the tag for this of uh, this word of God, I'd like you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm expecting great things. Expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Pray with me. Pray with me. Most holy Adonai God. We thank you that you love us so much. You have brought us into this day, and we do not take it for granted. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love, and we thank you that you have purpose in our living. You have blown into up the breath of life. As Jared said in that first verse, in that first chapter, in the first book of the Bible, Lord, because you created, because you created us in your image, we are here to give you thanks. We're here to live out the purpose that you have for our lives. And we thank you for Little Forest Baptist Church. We thank you for the pastor, Sneed. We thank you for every member and officer, every leader, every disciple who puts their hands to the plow. We thank you for every disciple of Christ who has gathered in this holy and sanctified space that we call a sanctuary. But Jesus is your house. And so we gather to give you praise. Give us eyes to see and give us ears to hear. Give us a hard to understand and uh, let our wills be surrendered to yours. Speak to us in this word. Speak through me that Lord you might be glorified and we would be blessed. Mm -hmm. Adonai. Mm -hmm. Hear our prayer. For it is always our praise. We offer to you in the name of your only and unique son Jesus the Christ. In Jesus name. Our Lord and our God. Yeah. And all who would agree would gladly say, Amen. 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 I'm expecting great things. Amen. Gentlemen, you have probably heard it, especially as you got closer to graduation, that people are proud of you, and they are. And that people are expecting great things from you, and they are. But what's more important is what you expect from yourself and what God expects of you. 
And so I want to encourage her to congratulate each and every one of you because the reason that you have gotten this far is not only does God expect great things, but God is proud of the great things done already in the It is not just about what you're going to do now that you are 18, now that you are in the United States a legal adult, but it's the fact that God has been grateful for you all of your life. But how do I know this? Because God made you. And if God made you, he made you for greatness. God never makes junk. God doesn't have time to do that. So when you are made in God's image, that means you are made for greatness. Yeah, yeah. And I want you to know if you are at this point, you've been living up to your potential. But here's the thing. You just get started on your journey of greatness. That God has purpose in your life. And not only your life, but God has purpose in all of our lives. That no matter where you are, if you say you're not a spring chicken, it doesn't matter. Because compared to God, none of us are spring chickens, right? And Moses didn't really get started in what he was called to do until he was 80. And so here it is that God still has an expecting great things from every single one of us. That God has greatness in us. And all God wants to do is use you to allow that greatness to come forth wherever you are in the stage of your life. Whether you are one year old or whether you are three or twelve or a hundred years of age and everything in between. God still has greatness for you to do. In general, I want you to know that God has purpose and purpose is powerful. When you have purpose in your life, that means you've got focus and when you've got focus, that means you got a faith because you believe in something that God is doing something and taking you somewhere. When you got faith, that means that purpose has some greatness in it. Here we look at this and realize that as we look at our lives, sometimes we end up trading our confusion as God wants us to do that. When you get purpose, when you get faith, you trade your confusion for clarity. Mm -hmm. That when you understand that you have purpose in your life, you, you swap out your doubts for determination. That God allows us to come forward and use all that God has given us. But we've got to be able to understand that God has something for us to do and something for us to become. And it's always about being. And as we are saying at First Baptist Church, we have a theme for the next two years. It's called Be On Purpose. All right. That you are to be, being, being that existence that is now, but also has potential for the future. But it's not done willy-nilly. It's not done just whatever is going to come. It is with purpose. That God has yeah. purpose for your lives. You are here in the United States. You came here from the BRC with purpose. That you two grew up in this church because God had purpose in your life. Yeah. And when God has purpose, Purpose is powerful. Look, somebody say, that's power. That's, that's power. power. That here it is that God wants us to know that when we look at this, that we commit our lives with more of God's purpose and meaning. And we know what that's like. We know what it's like when we set out with purpose, right? Sometimes we set out with purpose strong. We're like, hey, I got a plan. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to be. I'm going to take these steps. And, and we start it good. We good in the first week. We good in the first month. Maybe in the first year. But then the next week or the next month and the next year comes in and, and we have good intentions now. There we go. You know, I intended. You know what I think? I intended to do the right thing. But if we're not careful, then those purposes and those intentions turn into what happened. But God wants you to know that he wants you to stick to his part. God wants you to stick to his plan that he has for your lives as you go to Hampton, as you go to VCU, as you go to Northern Virginia Community College. He wants you to stick to his plan. I know that you looked and saw and decided where you were going to go, but don't you know that God had looked at all that you had in your mind and God made the final decision saying, here's what's going to be best. As it said, that some of which one of you had all these schools and then you finally decided on Hampton, right? And here it is that God gives us this plan that he has for our lives. But when you look at your to-do list, and Alex said it a little bit, as you look at your to-do list, sometimes that to-do list can become overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And we start to look at the to-do list that we created for ourselves, and our to-do list then becomes a want-to-do list. Mm -hmm. And we look at our want-to-do list, and when we start looking at our want-to-do list, it's all over. Not this week. Too busy. Not next week. Mm. It'll get better. Right. Next week comes, and the next week comes, and the next week comes. And, mm. and, and before you know it, you've given up your clarity back for confusion. Mm. Right. If you don't stay focused on God's plan and purpose, next thing you know, you swap back again your, from determination to doubt again. Mm. 
And the last thing you want to feel is guilty. Right? The last thing you want to feel is guilty. And so you try not to think about it. And when you try not to think about it, it just makes things worse. Right? You said, I started out with great things. Then I decided to settle for good things. Mm. Next thing you know, you ain't doing anything. <laughs> God wants you to know that that doesn't have to be your road. That could be any of our roads, no matter where you are in this life, that it doesn't have to be that way, that God didn't create us that way, God didn't make us that way, that we would live our lives that way. And here the prophet Isaiah helps us to understand because the prophet Isaiah wants to tell the nation of Israel, he's telling the same thing, it doesn't have to be that way, that God made you for greatness, God made you for great things, and if you will hold on to the purpose and plans that God has for you for great things, it may not be what the world has, it may not be what your friends want, it may not even be what your college friends want to want, but God has something great in store for you, and God has something great in store for all of us, not only as individuals, but also as children of God, and even as the church. Prophet Isaiah says it doesn't have to be that way. I don't think that's what God wants for us. And so look what he says at the beginning of Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19. He says, stop dwelling on past events, brooding over times gone by. You, you will hear some people, and in life you will eventually have it. Man, if I could speak to my younger self, I would have done things a whole lot different or a little different. The blessing is you don't have to do that. You get to start fresh and say, Lord, I'm still on your plan. But he tells us, Isaiah tells the nation who is now in bondage. They have been in captivity for 70 years, a couple generations. He tells them, stop brooding over the past. Don't worry about what happened in the past unless you are talking about your ancestors. But too often, we're talking about the baggage that we bring with us. And God says, stop talking about the things that happened. I already forgave you for that. We moved on beyond that. I've got great things and great things are ahead of you. It's not what's behind you. Stop brooding over times gone by. But he doesn't leave you with that. Look what he says. I'm doing something new. You're graduated. And God's doing something new. You have done great things through elementary and junior and, and high school, but God's doing something new with each other. And he says, it's springing up. <coughs> Can't you see it? He's trying to say that God has vision. He wants you to see what God's promises are for you, what God wants for you. Can't you see it? I'm making a road in the desert, rivers in the wasteland. When people said there was nothing, God's going to make something great. When people said there can't much come from that, that God is going to make it blossom and prosper. So that there's greatness in all that you are doing. And that's what God does for all of us. Everybody thought the pandemic would end some of us. But look at us. We are still here. Still praising God. God is still making roads in the desert and rivers in the wasteland. What's happening here? What's going on in this text? What's happening in this text? Isaiah is speaking to the Israelite nation because the Babylonians have taken them exile. Mm -hmm. And who could be more stuck mm -hmm. in their spiritual lives? Who could be more stalled in their spirit than those who are desperate and finding a way out of captivity? Here they are, and, they, and Israel is, and we, we can't even imagine what that feels like to not only be in captivity, but be taken from your home. And someone said, it's always good to be home. Imagine being taken from your home and being taken in captivity into another land, and you were there for 70 years. They've been there a couple generations, and the young ones have no memory of home. Other tales are told by their parents and their grandparents, and, and Judah is disappearing in their dreams. But Isaiah gives a powerful poetic vision here. He wants you to know that God has wants you to, to, to grab onto his vision that he has for you as you go into your college life and as you go beyond your college life. Alex, as you move beyond the graduation, understand that's another stepping stone, but then life in the fullness of what God wants us to do, that each step is a step into the greatness that God has for you. And I want you to know as you have done great things in Penn State, he's going to also have you do even greater things as you move into Hampton, as you move into VCU, as you move into Northern Virginia Community College. You're going to do great things while you are there, but God has greater things that's going to yeah. springboard you even as you go through that. Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah gives this powerful poetic vision mm -hmm. and he pictures exiles marching joyfully back home. Mm -hmm. 
They can't really grasp it, but he's, he's, he's picturing these exiles marching joyfully back home along a new road in the desert. A road that wasn't there before, a road that hadn't been, but it's a road that God is going to create that they can go back to where they're supposed to be in the power and greatness of what God has for them. And they know, Isaiah says, you won't know who cares for you. You're going to know that I'm going to create a word, that a road that don't even exist. I'm, I'm going to make sure there's refreshment and revival for you when you find those hard times and the courses that maybe going to have you scratch your head when you're not going to necessarily like your professor where the work is going to seem a little more difficult than what you would expect. But God is going to say, hold on, because the same way I created roads for you to make it through what you are now, I'm going to create new roads for you that I have you make it through whatever you're going through now because I have great things in store for you. And he reminds them, and he declares that you are captives no more. That's good for us as African Americans right now. We're dealing with a country that is trying. We got a Florida governor who wants to make sure that we don't learn any African American history. We got other states that are trying to take away and understand who we are as African American, as black people. But God wants you to know that God made us for great things. And can nobody take away what God has made us to be, whether this country or anywhere else around this world? Isaiah reminds them not to be so small-minded to think that God has nothing greater for you. Don't be so small-minded. He's telling the nation of Israel, do you really think that the God who allowed you to come in captivity is not the same God who can not only bring you out of captivity, but can open up roads that didn't exist before, that you might have blessings that you never even thought of before. That somehow, your purpose in God is broken beyond repair. Mm -hmm. We need this word today. Mm -hmm. I need you to hear me today. Mm -hmm. We serve a desert road builder. Mm -hmm. We serve the rivers and the wasteland God. Mm -hmm. We serve a God who can do anything but fail. We serve a God who spoke into existence and it was. We serve a God who formed us in his image and not his physical image because God is a spirit, right? But he formed us in his character, in his love, in the spiritual attributes of us. That is within us. Greatness is within you. And if greatness is within you, is it wrong for God to expect greatness from us? All right. All right. All right. All right. And so we can, I get excited when I have opportunities to speak to young people and, and see young people who understand that God is doing great things, but not just the young people. I get excited when I see what God is doing in all of our lives. If you are here, it's because God is doing something in your life. If you are here, it's because God has done some great things. And anybody glad that God has used you to do some great things? There is a way ahead of you. A reason to expect great things if you're bold enough, if you're faithful enough, if you're committed enough to take the steps of faith. Here it is that God wants you to do something, and, and, and I use this term this morning. This is a totally different message, but I, this morning I told the church that, that the title of the message was you got to keep pushing. That God wants you to keep pursuing the things that God has for you, the greatness that God has for you. Keep pushing towards what God has for you. Keep pushing to what he wants to do with you and happen at least you and Northern Virginia Community College. Keep pushing as God keeps doing yeah, and yeah, using yeah. you and opening roads for you and, and, and putting rivers and wastelands for you because you, you're going into something you've never been in before. But understand, wherever you go, God is going to meet you there. Wherever you go, God's already there. Wherever you go, God is already going to meet you there so that you can continue to do great things. Yeah. This is where Paul comes in. Here in Philippians chapter 3, Saul talks about pitfalls. He's called Paul later. That's just the Greek version of his Hebrew name. It's not his really name change. It's just that he had two names, and that was normal back then. Whether you were Hebrew or Greek, you had multiple names. And so he's known as Saul. That's his Hebrew name, but his Greek name is Paul. Here it is that Saul speaks about pitfalls. And on paper... Life will look good for Saul on paper. But we learn about believing paper resumes. Isn't that right, Representative George Santos? If that's really his name. Saul wrote this about himself, but, and I love this. He says, on paper, I look good. But I want you to know something. I ain't worried about what the paper says. But here's what Paul says. He said, if I had to pray, 
Yeah. If I had to puff out my chest, mm -hmm. I would tell you that I was circumcised, and he's a Hebrew, right? Yeah. See, he would say I was circumcised on the eighth day according to the law. All right. That I was, I am a member of the nation of Israel, the Most High God, and not Yahweh. He would say that I'm of the tribe of Benjamin, that I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews, that I'm a zealous for the law, that I'm a Pharisee, that I study under Gamaliel, that I, I'm a persecutor of the church, and I, and I was blameless under the law. Saul thought he had it made, that there was a problem. He felt spiritually lost. Don't want to get so worldly focus that you lose your spiritual connection to God. Because what's ultimately going to keep you is God because there are a whole lot of people who can tell you about man, my, I was hustling and making it for this, that, and the third and I still ended up miserable. And so don't ever forget your spiritual connection to what God has for you. The frustration built up inside of Paul so much that it, he had focused on getting rid of this new set called the way that eventually would be called Christians. And the more he saw Christians, though, the more he saw their simple life, their joyous life, their satisfied life, the more he realized what's going on with me. Saul was living in his bitterness. And then he heard a voice one day. Yeah. It was on the road to Damascus. You know the story. It was on the road to Damascus. The voice was the voice of Jesus. And three years later, Saul finds his way back. And he's a changed man. He's not what he used to be. He's no longer looking at his paper resume. He's no longer looking at what makes him great, but what God makes great. And he comes back. And this feared persecutor is now one of the greatest gospel, if you will, writers and gospel proclaimers of the word of God. And what God wanted him to know. And Paul was saying, I thought I had it made. I thought I knew what I wanted. And I thought I knew what greatness meant. But here, I met Jesus on the road. And when I met Jesus on the road, I truly met greatness. And when I met greatness, it changed all of my plans. God still had great things in store for me. God still had greatness in store for me. But it was no longer about Paul. It's all about the Lord. God. Yes. Years later, Paul would write these words to the church how to get out of being this place of spiritual stuck. Forgetting what is behind me. Straining forward to what lies ahead. I keep pursuing the goal in order to win the prize offered by God's upward calling in Messiah Yeshua. To live in an expectation of greater things in God I just need you to do three things. Mm. Real simple, three things. First is you've got to release the pull of the past. Right. You've got to release the pull of the past. There's mm. always going to be something in your past trying to pull on you. All right. There's always going to be something that didn't go right that's always trying to remind you. Remember, it didn't go right then. What makes you think you can do right now? Mm. There's always going to be something. And, and I'm not talking about our same Kofa moments. We take those wisdoms and nuggets as we move forward. But I'm talking about the luggage that doesn't want to let go right. of you. I'm talking about the mistakes that somehow somebody always wants to remind you of. You've got to let that go. You've, you've got to release the pull of the past. And the second thing that God wants you to remember is you've got to overcome the paralysis of the present. Just because of what is happening in your life, things may be going great, but don't, don't hold on to that. Things may be a challenge right now. Don't hold on to that. Go know that the present is here just for that. It's a present. It's a gift. But understand that God don't want you to hold on just to what you have now. God has greater things in store for you. Make sure that you enjoy your present, but understand God has a greater future in store for each and every one of you. Overcome the paralysis of the present, straining forward toward what lies ahead. Yeah. It's kind of the image of that track and field where back during that days, it was whoever touched the ribbon first. You know, now we've got the electronic, the computer to let you know. But back then, it was whoever touched the ribbon first way back then. He's really saying, strain forward that way so that you are going towards the prize. Be the first in your heart to touch that goal. All right. Doesn't matter what anyone else's goal is for you. What does God say your goal is? That's what God wants for you. And then the last thing that God wants you to do is to move forward in the call of the future. All right. The final thing you need to do in your spiritual walk with Jesus, keep pursuing the goal in order to win the prize offered by God's upward calling in the Messiah, Yeshua. In other words, when you go to college, when you are living your life, when you're not in class and you're doing something else, keep 
Keep your heart open to the voice of God. Amen. Keep your heart open to the yeah. voice of God. Yeah. There's be a whole lot of voices. And there's nothing wrong with some of them. There's a whole lot wrong with some of them. But there's nothing wrong with some other. But keep your heart open to the voice of God. Yeah. Remember, Jesus said, my sheep know me and they know my voice. So keep your heart open to the voice of God because God knows your future better than anybody else. Amen. Amen. Individual Christians and even churches are prone to paralyzed thinking sometimes. Mm. But you stay open. Notice Paul's words in verse 14. It's a call that comes from a future that's greater. In other words, leave the comfort zone of the last year. Leave the comfort zone. What you did in high school, great. Hallelujah. But let it go. Because God's got greater things in store. Because if you can't let go of high school, you can't move into the greatness that God has for you. And I know some of you been saying, Pass up, oh, that's easy. I'm already ready to let go of high school. I'm moving on. You know, I was class president, but I'm moving on. I, I'm doing stuff, but I'm moving on. Someone said this faith is believing in advance with God, what will only make sense in reverse. Faith is believing in advance, what will only make sense in reverse. In other words, I don't know what that means right now, but I believe God. Amen. And in the future, I'll be able to say, look at God. Amen. Look what God was doing for me because I trusted. Look what God is doing in my life because I trusted. Expecting greater and God is believing God isn't finished with you. And you are heading off to college because you believe God isn't finished with you. You are grad you graduated because you believe God isn't finished with you. You are here today because you believe God isn't right. finished with you. You singing today and you playing today because you believe God isn't finished with you. Anybody believe God is finished with you? No, if you are here breathing, God still has a purpose and plan and God still has greater in store for you. I'm going to close with this. There's a song many of you know. It's, it's by uh, Praise Your Hill. Your list. The, call, the song is called Great Things. Anybody know that song? Amen. Amen. Great things. Amen. I ain't singing it, so don't even play it. <laughs> but it says, I'm expecting I'm, great Oh, man, you know what? I, I'm not going to do it. I'm expecting great things. Yes. 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 I'm expecting great things. You hear it's almost a mantra. Yes. I'm expecting great things yes. in my life. Yes. You do great things. Yes. In my home, yes. you do great things. All right. All right. All, All around. around. All right. You do great things. You do great things. Here it is. Eyes, Eyes haven't seen, seen yeah. but I choose to, to believe yeah. in, great things. in great things. Yes. yes. My brothers, God is expecting great things, not because God doesn't know, but God's expecting great things because God is in you. And if God is in you, the greatest thing there is is in you. Yeah. Jesus is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. The Father is in you. Little Forest Baptist Church is in you. And so if you have greatness in you, there's nothing wrong with expecting greatness for yourself. So I want you to go ahead and expect great things for yourself. I want you to leave here and say, I'm expecting great things for the God I serve is a great God. If he's a great God, there's nothing but greatness in me. How do I know? Because God loves you so much. He sent the greatest man on the land. He came through 42 generations. His name was great. He is God with us. His name was great. He was so great that Satan got mad. That the world got mad. And they tried to kill him. They hung him high. And they stretched the wire. They buried him in a ball tomb. Thinking that they could kill greatness. But I want you to know. You can't kill greatness. You can't kill the greatest one there is. On the third day, greatness rose of all power. This day And rose again because he loved you that much. Yes. Yes. That greatness is inside of you. Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's inside of you, Jared. It's inside of you. Yes. yes. Each and every one of you. Yes. Yes. All right. Each of you has greatness inside That's right. of you. Amen. And so I'm expecting greatness. Amen. All right. Not because of what is said on paper. But because I know you and I got the same God with him. Amen. So gentlemen, go out and be great. Do great things. Yes. Because you serve a great God. Amen. Amen.
great God is still extending his person, his love, his salvation, his forgiveness, his richness. Today, Jesus still says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. See, some of us, there may be somebody here where you've been relying on what's on me. God is looking for what's in your heart. All right. All right. And you may be here today and you have yet to truly receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. No shame. Just opportunity. No embarrassment. Just grace. And so if you are here today, you can receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Or well, if you're looking for a church home, you are here at Little Forest Baptist Church. All right. With an amazing man of God in the church family. They would love to have you become part of this body of Christ. You heard the testimony from these three young men. Amen. Four young men. Amen. All right. Man. And so if you are here today, man, woman, boy, or girl, yeah, yeah. Jesus extends the invitation yeah. saying, won't you come? The doors are open for you. Won't you come? And if you know that you know that Jesus knows that you are his, come on and give God some praise. <laughs> Thank God for the word of God. Amen. Thank God for the word of God. Amen. Sister Steve, we're going to ask that you would come at this time. Amen. Thank God for our worship leader this afternoon. Amen. 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 My sister, thank you.
I mean? You didn't put it in an envelope, but then you say you know it. <laughs> approved this in 1999, I believe it was. And thank you, Lil Forrest and Pastor Snead, for continuing this scholarship uh, in memory of Reverend Jackson. And to you, Reverend Savage, I certainly enjoyed the word that you brought before us this afternoon. And to our three young men, it is just a pleasure to stand here and to see three black young yeah. men. All right. <laughs> And Lord, we are very proud of you, although we have known you for a very short time. But your mannerisms and the way you have carried yourself since you have been here has been outstanding. Amen. And may God bless you and all your undertakings. And to Jared and to Jaden, they were born here. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. I tell you, they are such nice young men. Yeah, they are very respectable young men. And you know you will hear something out of some of them sometimes, but I have not heard anything disrespectful from these two young men. Now, I know, Jaden, you're not gonna want me to say this, but when you are a little tiny thing, and Judy, your mother can remember this, you'd be outside that door, you didn't want anybody to touch you but your mom, and you'd be screaming and hollering. <laughs> And I recall one day, Pastor Sneed went back there, and he just took you, and he shook you, and was take, talking to your mother. But you quickly got over that. Because <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are just so proud of all of you. And Alex, you have grown up to be a mighty nice young man. Yes, he has. And, and I'm like my friend, Minister Pat. I may need to come talk to you. All right. <laughs> And um, we say to the three of you, God has purpose for your life. Amen. And as you leave this place, and as you walk the various college campuses, there will be temptations there. There will be people just like you. But I am of the belief that God and Pastor Smith Come on. And little forest has an impact That's right. in you. Thank you. Yes. Good stuff. Yes. That you know when to say no and you know when to say yes. Yes. You have a lot that you can offer the other students there at the college. And we know that God is going to shine through you. Amen. And as you go about this new journey, your new walk. May God bless you, keep you, and remember the teachings that the church and your parents have shared with you. Because when you keep that in your heart and keep it with you daily, I know when you go to classes sometimes it will be very difficult, but you can do it. Because as Pastor Savage told me, oh, either Alex, I'm not sure which one said you fall down, but there's a song said. We fall down, but we, but we get, get up. up. Amen. And we know you will do just that. Amen. I'm looking forward to following you, all of you, these four years. May God bless you and may He keep you, and we love you very much. Amen. 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 Um, it's no question that we love you guys. We thank God for you. I'm going to ask Jamie. Is the mic on? 
you coordinate. We're going out to our favorite place uh, All right. soon. And let's make sure we uh, coordinate with Lord and Jared. We get a date. And we're headed to our favorite place. Amen. Right. Amen. To, the, to the parents of the graduates, did you want to have something to say before we if you want to have something to say, you may come forward. Any other parents who are here who desire to come? Amen. 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 I don't want to miss my baby. I don't want you to go when you have to go. Jaleel, you all right? I'm I'm great. <laughs> It's important. You all see this fire in front of the altar. Mm -hmm. We don't burn those candles for no reason. That fire represents the very presence of God. Yeah. Right. We come in. We're in the presence of God. And God has spoken this afternoon through the preacher. I do believe we had the right preacher for this occasion. Yeah. We had a very encouraging word to our young people to all of us. For that we say thank you. And to my outlet, we say thank you for being kind. Amen. Amen. We pray out with my outlet there. Apparently, I'm without pastor. Amen. So we'll be praying with and for you. Amen. But you know, friends are here. Amen. So All right. Anytime you need help, you know, we're here to help you. Amen. And we appreciate you as a church family. Um, to the scholarship committee, Thank you for your, your planning. All of you who served on the scholarship committee, uh, thank you for what you've done. To Dr. Jackson, uh, to Macedonia from Hill, to Herman, Brenda, please let them know we appreciate their generosity. Amen. 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 We, are, we are grateful. Now, we invited a young lady from Foxwood. I'm not sure if you're here. Sometimes I, I miss people. If you're here, you need to stand. Uh, and our outreach. Met a young lady who's in school. Okay, she did not make it this afternoon. So we are indeed grateful for all who have come. And with that, I'm going to give back to our preacher for our benediction. But it's been a good day. Yeah. Yeah. Very good day. And for that, we are grateful. Yes, ma'am. There are cupcakes in the back. Okay, all right. So you have a sweet tooth. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Shall we stand for the benediction? Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Steve. Thank you so much, Little Forest Baptist Church, and all who are here. Again, congratulations, to Jared, Jane, and Lord, and everyone who is in school. And bless you. God bless you. Continue to do well. And Alex, we congratulate you. Let us look to the Lord. Most holy and the night God, it is always good to be in your presence. Jesus. We thank you that we were able to worship together as your children. We thank you that you continue to let each generation know that you are with us. Lord, continue to remind us that you expect great things from us because your greatness is in us. Now to you who is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before your presence with exceeding joy. To you, our only wise God and Savior, the glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and forever, let the people of God together say,
A-R-S. 